so uh, so uh, as it's, it was said before, uh, we we work in a R&D company which is operating in the geospatial domain, and the the research you will see in this presentation was produced in the context of the Emotional Cities project. So the Emotional Cities project uh, is a research project which is uh, aiming to to map uh, emotions to the ur urban landscape, so to the natural and built uh, environment. So basically, we would like to uh, understand uh, what are the, the emotions that are triggered when someone walks uh, in a park or near an empty building or a particular part of the city. Uh, as you can imagine, this, uh, this task demands a lot of, of data, of different data sets. Um, from the traditional geospatial domain, so the data sets that characterize the, the urban environment. So anything you can think of, like the, the, um, the road map, uh, the buildings, uh, but also the, the environmental uh, characteristics, like temperature, uh, sun, and so on. And then we have uh, neuro neuroscience data. And perhaps this is a bit more new for us, because it's not data that is traditional uh, used uh, in geospatial domains. So it's a uh, data that has perhaps uh, not much diversity in terms of uh, geospatial uh, attributes, but it has a, a huge diversity in terms of timestamps. So it's very dense uh, in, the, in the time dimension. Uh, so, so the idea is to collate all these data sets uh, and we do that by creating a spatial data infrastructure. I'm going to uh, talk a little bit more about that uh, in a few slides, but this uh, this spatial data infrastructure needs to be able to um, to deal with these uh, sometimes uh, volume uh, large volume data sets. At the same time, they are very heterogeneous, uh, and they have these characteristics that I said before. They are both geospatial and temporal, uh, so time series data. So we, we want to do this uh, according to the FAIR principles. So the FAIR principles uh, are uh, describing what we say uh, it's, it's the information needs to be findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So ultimately, we all want our information to be reusable. We want uh, people to be uh, able to use our data for uh, building uh, other research for creating uh, products, services, uh, etc. Uh, otherwise, the, the data remains in, in silos. Uh, in order to do that, uh, there is a very important role of, of the standards. So the standards are what make sure that we can do that in, a, in an efficient way. So this has both uh, challenges and opportunities. So in one way, uh, in this project, we, we have the opportunity to, to choose uh, what we want to do from scratch, so we, can, uh, we are not bound by any le legacy system, we can choose which standards we, we want to use. Uh, but on the, on the other hand, we have uh, a user base, uh, which are uh, mostly scientists, some of them not from the geospatial domain even, so neuroscientists, so they are not, uh, they are not used to, to use uh, GIS standards or, uh, or even standards at all. Uh, and the people who are used to use standards, maybe they are not used uh, to the standards that we have in mind. So we, we have some challenges here, where we're going to talk about that uh, in a second. So before I move on and, and talk more about the SDIs, just, I thought I'd just stop for a moment uh, and define this. So basically, uh, an SDI can be seen as a framework. It includes uh, the geographic data, but everything which is also associated to it. So the metadata, which describes this data, uh, the services, and ultimately also the users. So we, when we think about an SDI, we need to think about who is using this data and what are the tools they are using. Uh, and then the, the whole idea is that they are uh, all connected in a, in a smooth way and they make uh, the use of spatial data uh, efficient, uh, ultimately. So SDIs have been around for a very long time. 
we can we can think about the the beginnings of the SDIs in the in the early 90s. Uh, this was uh, in 1994. There was a, an order in the United States uh, to coordinate uh, the acquisition of geographic data. At the same year, uh, OGC, the Open Geospatial Consortium, uh, was founded. So not a coincidence. Uh, and then we have seen uh, many standards uh, uh, deriving, uh, coming from, the OG from OGC. Um, I put on the timeline uh, WFS, which perhaps is a standard uh, some of you are familiar. Uh, and then after that, we had other standards as well. Uh, we had uh, you know, WMS, WMTS, and so on. And uh, here in Europe, we had uh, also a milestone which was, uh, perhaps you are familiar with the INSPIRE initiative. And this was kind of a, also like a, a rule, so uh, something that had to be implemented, but forced uh, a lot of uh, uh, agencies all over Europe to, to face uh, uh, what standards are and how to implement them. And then we start to see a, a, a shift around the 2010s, uh, there was the explosion of uh, REST APIs and the web started to become more uh, what, what we are used to see today. Uh, in 2011, we had uh, uh, the appearance of Swagger. So Swagger is a, a specification which allows us to document um, web APIs in an interactive uh, manner. And this originated what, what, which was later on the open API specification. And in OGC, uh, things were also moving. So in uh, 2018, there was an hackathon uh, which called the WFS3 hackathon, which originated later on the first release of WFS3. And this was kind of a game changer because uh, WFS3 was the first of what we call uh, the OGC APIs, so a, mod a modern family of uh, web APIs. If you think about the first generation of uh, uh, web services in OGC, uh, you will see that they are not uh, leveraging mu much of the practices that we see uh, in the modern web today. So if you think about using status codes or content negotiation, uh, even using JSON, okay, this was not uh, the case in most of the OWS uh, services. And, and, and it's okay that it was like that because they were developed a long time ago when these things were not uh, the, common, the common rule. Uh, but the web changed, right? I, I things have changed and, uh, and so did the OGC standard. So now we have the, this family of APIs, the OGC APIs, and they are doing that. They are leveraging uh, the practices that we see in the modern web. So they are using uh, the, the HTTP methods, status codes, content negotiation, and so on. They, they are using schema.org to make sure that uh, the data is seen by the search engines because people are searching for data in Google these days. So it's important that uh, the data is visible there. They are using the open API specification, and most of all, they are, they are very flexible. So they are uh, developed in, in different parts, and, uh, and th they are not um, very strict about which kind of encodings you should use. So you can use JSON, you can use HTML, and so on. So it, it's a completely uh, new approach, and the final goal the, of this, the ultimate goal, is to make sure that these APIs, uh, these standards, are uh, more friendly to the developers, so they are easier to implement, even if you don't have like, a lot of uh, OGC experience or even GIS experience. So this is the picture of uh, some standards that were used uh, in, in the first generation of web services when you wanted to do uh, an SDI, a spatial data infrastructure, typically you would use these standards, so WMS, uh, WMTS, WFS, and WCS. When you think about this in the new paradigm of the OGC APIs, you, you would replace uh, WMS by OGC API maps, 
WMTS by OGC API tiles, WFS by WFS3, which is also called OGC API features, and WCS by OGC API coverages. And all these, uh, all these services would be discover discoverable uh, through uh, OGC API records endpoint. Now, in this project, uh, because we have mostly vector data for now, <laughs> we decided to focus on these two standards. So OGC API features and OGC API tiles, uh, considering that we are use, using vector tiles. So the question that we, we ask uh, ourselves is, is it possible uh, to this day to create already an SDI, a complete SDI, using these new OGC API standards? Do we have like the software available? Do we have the tools? Do we have the knowledge? And this is the answer that uh, Antonio is going to, uh, the question that Antonio is going to answer now. Ciao. Um, so um, the, the point now, the, the, the reason also we uh, submitted this paper to uh, the FOS4G was to share this experience with uh, this uh, SDI development. The quick answer to this question is in, the, in this slide. Uh, it's, is it possible, uh, as long as we uh, accept the definition of special data infrastructure, like not something that should include necessarily every use case, but that can cover quite uh, an, an interesting number of use cases. In our case, it was possible to, uh, to serve uh, OGC API tiles, features, and records that quite cover all the um, array of use cases that we had. This is the schema of um, uh, a, a modern, what we call modern stack, uh, that it, it's developed around the OGC API, that is uh, a one-stop solution for uh, OGC API um, uh, standards, because it offers different support for different standards. And in the, in the back end, we, I, I don't want to enter in the detail of every component, but just to mention that we uh, asked to, to our partner, the partners in the project to uh, share data uh, using a data lake. Uh, data lake is uh, used in the uh, <laughs> way of many of us intense data lake. I don't know the structure. I don't know which kind of data is going to be shared. So I put everything in the data lake. And later, we decide where to, to store this data. In our case, uh, this data is going to be uh, stored both in the file system for uh, the tiles and in the Elasticsearch uh, um, storage. We did that uh, developing, uh, of course, there is the overhead of uh, having to develop the pipeline or scripts to uh, ingest this data into the, the storage. But later, it was quite straightforward since we have OGC API having uh, in his providers uh, uh, the possibility to connect to both the uh, a tile repo and uh, Elasticsearch and to serve this data to different clients, different clients that uh, here we have some example like the QGIS, Leaflet, um, ArcGIS, and uh, some Python library that already support uh, OG, uh, OGC API standards. Also Kibana, uh, that is uh, part of the Elastic Stack, uh, and it's quite has a quite interesting support for uh, geospatial function. This is an extra. A uh, few words about PyGeo API. Uh, PyGeo API is a Python implementation of OGC API suite of standard. Uh, it's uh, now an OGC project. Uh, it's, of course, uh, a free open source software. And it's uh, an OGC reference implementation for uh, OGC API features. Uh, OGC API features, it's at the day the one of the approved standard. The, the other are still a work in progress. Uh, but PyGeo API is already supporting the standard both collaborating uh, into the definition of, uh, of them. On the side of clients, we are a bit more uh, uh, less supported because, uh, yes, we have support for uh, OGC API features in QGIS. There are some popular libraries already uh, where it's already possible to connect to um, to these, these OGC API features, but less, um, 
it, it, it can be better considering that we have to serve this uh, data set to, to citizens. The, 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 the uh, final purpose of the SDI is to publish this data. So it's something that is going to, to be um, interesting in the next year of the project. What are the limitations? It's, yes, possible to create uh, an SDI with the OGC API, but there are some limitations like, the, of course, the evolving nature of standard, and that means evolving nature of the software uh, supporting this standard, but also the, the lack, as we said, of uh, implementation of clients and uh, uh, the, also the know-how the know about this, uh, this. To face that, we and also to cover the old legacy, what we co calling le legacy standard, uh, uh, the, the OWS standard of OGC. So the one that Joanna mentioned before, the WMS, WFS, etc. We put uh, um, the, uh, so the solid solution of GeoServer that is uh, a quite uh, similar use case. We have GeoServer in the place of uh, PyGeo uh, API connecting to the file system and the database PostGIS and uh, connected to, to different clients. Both share the data lake. So we didn't uh, um, overload our users with the thing of having to consider this duplicity, you know, so to, to have to use two different SDI. They just put data in the data lake and scripts uh, and pipelines uh, uh, put the, this information in the proper uh, stack. So uh, we, in the end, have an, an hybrid approach taking the best of, uh, of both solutions. Uh, having this solution, of course, introduce a complexity for, for us developing the, the SDI because we have to maintain uh, more tools, uh, we have to take care of more tools, but we are born in a fortunate area where we have tools like Docker that let's make life easy uh, into developing and uh, shipping uh, in more tools uh, that have to, to be interconnected, all the, all the pipelines that we mentioned. It's uh, quite easy with, uh, with these tools. I don't know if we, we could have, have done the same with, uh, without Docker. In the end, uh, what is the, um, the structure of the... I, I, uh, we put this slide to, to show that in the end we have to stack more the modern and the legacy, but uh, we have the data lake for users and for... Uh, on the other hand, that we have to present to the user, so the, how to find this data, we put a catalog that is shared between the two stack. The catalog uh, is done with OGC API records, uh, since it's supported by PyGeo API, we decide to, to use the advantage of uh, uh, this solution to, to implement the, the most modern uh, approach to the, um, to the catalog topic. So we expect in the end, end users to be able to find that data via this catalog. So uh, what we uh, learned by this experience uh, is possible to start to do, to cover some use case with the OGC API uh, stack is definitely possible with all the advantage of having a, a standard that is going to be more and more important in the upcoming years. Also, it's, uh, uh, the, 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 the only thing is not yet possible to have one-stop solution for both, for supporting all the legacy standard and modern standard. You still have to use more tools, like in our case, uh, uh, GeoServer and uh, PyGeo API. And, uh, Yes, in, in the end, it's, uh, it's, if you can cover your use case with OGC API, uh, you, you can go with that. Otherwise, you can still uh, having a similar approach, uh, supporting for the time being the, the previous standard with uh, some other solution. And that's it. Uh, if you have any question, we will be happy to, to answer. Thank you.